Hey everyone, in this video, I'm going to go over how you can take a person who has a lot of uh, likes on their LinkedIn post and a lot of comments on their LinkedIn post, and we are going to scrape everybody who liked and commented on the post. And so the first thing that you need to do is you need to grab the, you need to decide, okay, this is the post that I want to uh, grab some leads from. So there's 426 people who liked it and 114 people who commented. The easiest way to do this is if you go to Phantom Buster. Uh, Phantom Buster has tools to be able to do this. So the first thing we're just gonna do is we're gonna type in post. Uh, maybe we'll go to LinkedIn. We'll type in post and then we can have the activity extractor. This is not what we want. We want the post commenters export and the post likers export. For this uh, run, we're just gonna do the post likers. The post commenters is the exact same way. So when you click use this Phantom, and then we can install the Chrome extension and everything to get there. The LinkedIn cookie and such. Okay. Now we'll just do this. Connect to LinkedIn. That's the session cookie. Uh, the URL, we're just going to put in the LinkedIn post URL. If you have more than one, you can use a Google Sheet, but we don't have more than one. So we're just going to hit this. We'll hit save. And then you can edit this information if you need it this is mostly like if you're targeting like 10 people's posts you want to remove duplicate profiles between different posts pretty nice you get it save and then you want to launch it you can schedule a launch but we're not going to schedule a launch so we'll just hit launch on this now i already ran this so we're just going to hit stop it's going to give you uh, a cache where you're going to get all of the data and so the the data is going to look like this let me just pull it up for you So the data looks like this. And now everybody's next question is how do I turn this into email addresses? Uh, Phantom Buster is pretty expensive for getting uh, email addresses and you don't have a whole lot to go off of here. You don't have their company URL. They don't, you don't have their company name. You've got like kind of their job title, but really this is just their headline. This isn't really their actual job title and you have your name, their name. So then you see here we have their LinkedIn profile link. Now see how it says backslash IN and then this A-C-O-A-A-A-P-X-Y, blah, 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 blah. This is called a VM ID. If you were to put this into most tools to do a LinkedIn enrichment, it's not going to work um, because what th this is like every time you scrape LinkedIn, this is the hashed ID that they give you. And if you click on this link and it takes us, see how it's not, I'm not sure if you can see uh in this this uh window screen but see how it's linkedin.com backslash in backslash like and it's no nowhere near that other thing so most tools need this in order to enrich uh the linkedin profile in order to get an email address uh but clay does not so we're going to jump over to clay and we're going to sign in and we're going to start this list and so we'll hit new table uh select csv to upload then we'll hit continue. So we have all these people. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna enrich this, this link over here. So we're gonna hit enrich data. And we're gonna hit enrich LinkedIn, enrich person from LinkedIn profile. Now, usually it would be LinkedIn profile, but these are not normal LinkedIn profiles. It's a sales, we're gonna call it a sales navigator profile. It's technically a VM idea, but most users wouldn't know that. So we're gonna put in the profile link. And then we're going to hit continue to add fields. And this is actually everything that we're going to need for now. And so we'll run that and we'll just make sure that we mapped it properly. Just let it run. Cool. So now we're getting these people back and see how we went from a hashed VM ID to now this is cat shoe chuck. Um, and so now we have the regular URL. What we also get is in their latest experience, we get their company domain, which is what we really need to be able to find their, their email address. So we're going to take this. Now we're going to hit enrich data. We'll hit data points, work email. I take out Hunter. Um, then we're going to map the full name. We're going to map the company name. So for Detagma, um, I, and I'm telling Clay that we should change this. Um, for Detagma, company domain works even better than company name, so I always just put that in. 
and then we'll put the company domain in again for find email. And then we will run this. Now, while this is all getting set up and these are still running, notice how this one says profile is private. This is something that will happen when, uh, you know, you just, the, the data provider that we're getting this from, if you can't access this profile without logging into LinkedIn, then it's just going to call the profile private, which is the only unfortunate part about this. And then if we're missing their domain, we won't be able to find their email address, but you know, sometimes that's kind of just the way it goes. So I'm going to run the rest of this. And this is exactly how we would get everybody's um, email address. I think I'll just show you one other thing that when we're getting emails, I'm pretty sure Snov can do it. No, never mind. Um, we'll be adding a data provider pretty shortly who can get just the uh, LinkedIn URL and then give you a work email address. Uh, so with that, uh, I hope this was helpful and let me know if you have any questions.